Good morning. How did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up feeling positive? Did you wake up feeling negative? Did you wake up thinking, oh no, another day? Well, listen, I got a word for you today and it's a word of exhortation because how you see yourself on a daily basis is how your day will go, amen? Many of you know what I'm talking about. And I just want to encourage you today that you are strong and you are mighty and you are powerful and you can do anything that you set your hand to because you have the Lord living in your life. Glory to God. So I woke up this morning and um, I was just really feeling compelled again by the Holy Ghost to exhort. Maybe it's only for one person. That's not my worry. I just be, I'm just called to be obedient to, to the Holy Ghost. And I heard the words, you are called to be mighty. Well, I can say I already know that. So I felt the Lord was saying that he wanted me to exhort someone today. And again, my favorite book is in Ephesians. Um, well, one of my favorite books. Um, I love the book of Ephesians. And it's something I think that every believer should meditate on. Um, and just really get some of those uh, promises in your spirit. Amen. But I'm just going to go right to chapter 6. And this, this is just going to be a short little exhortation, a short um, uh, little bit of a study. Uh, but it could be exhausted more. If you desire to do that, you, I encourage you to do that. Because uh, when you get into the Word and you and you study it and you meditate on it, you chew on it and you mull over it, you just, it becomes life to you, glory to God. So chapter six, verse 10, it says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I'm just gonna stop right there and that's the scripture I wanna focus on. Paul is saying, furthermore, he had more to say, he's concluding what he has to say to the church of Ephesus, but he's also hoping that this letter would be dispersed uh, amongst other churches. It wasn't just to the church of Ephesus. But uh, so what he's saying here is, furthermore, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Let's just stop there for that moment and look at that. And this is the exhortation for you today. If you're feeling weak, tired, weary, run down, worn out, then you have not been spending time with the Holy Ghost. You have not been spending time in the presence of God. Don't expect your life to go um, into uh, this place of victory if you're not spending time with the Lord. You cannot do it outside of that. Oh, you may have some successful days and, and whatever, but ultimately, if you're, if you're struggling with things and, you know, be it depression, sadness, hopelessness, despair, financial problems, relational problems, whatever life throws at you, you cannot make it on your own. You need the fuel from heaven's atmosphere. You need that fuel of relationship with God. Amen. And I know this is for some someone today. So let me just camp there for a minute. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Furthermore, be strong. We are exhorted there by Paul to be strong. That's an action word. It's, he's, he's presenting it to you and he's saying, it's up to you to be strong. He's exhorting you and he's saying, be strong in the Lord. What does it mean to be strong in the Lord? Well, if you look it up in the Greek, and I'm not going to give you all the, you know, I'm just going to tell you what I know and you can study it yourself, but it means to be empowered. It's a Greek word uh, to endue with strength or to receive strength and to be bold. So Paul is saying there, finally, be endued with strength. Well, whose strength are we endued with? Not our own, that's for sure, because we won't make it on our own strength. We may get so far, but what Paul is saying is to be endued with the strength of the Lord, glory to God, to receive his strength to be open to receive it. You're not gonna receive it if you're doing your own thing and you're not gonna receive it if you're not setting time aside with him. And it means to be bold. Only can you be bold when you are found in him. Only can you be bold when you uh, draw from the resources of heaven 
heaven's atmosphere and heaven's treasure chest. Glory to God. Okay, so finally be strong, and he tells you, in the Lord. Not in your own strength, as I said, but in the Lord. Glory to God. And in the strength of his might. So be empowered in the Lord, as I said. Another, another way, how do we do that? Uh, as I said, we wait on him. We uh, have meditation with him. We have fellowship with him. I love Psalm 27, 14. Let's just, got your Bibles, just quickly go there. You can just sit and listen and receive because uh, I believe the anointing of the Holy Ghost is on this because many saints, many saints in the body of Christ struggle with their identity, with knowing who they are, uh, what they're called to be. You know, many are, are running here and there looking for a ministry, looking for things in life when they don't know how to sit at the feet of Jesus. And that's what he's called us to do. First and foremost, if you want anything from the Father, sit at the feet of Jesus. Establish that. Get that well rehearsed in your life and you will watch. You will see, watch and see the windows of heaven will open over your life and Oh my gosh, he will pour out such amazing things into your life. Psalm 27, um, verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait on the Lord. When we wait on the Lord, we become, when we wait on the Father, we, we become one with him. That it's, if I remember that, that meaning of that word in the Hebrew, I didn't look it up, but years ago I did, I studied on that. Um, it means to be entwined, like two cords being twined together, I think. Um, and, but really what it means is to become one with him. When you are waiting on him, you are becoming one with him. You are, uh, your heart and his heart are fusing together, glory to God. And then what happens is Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40. This is very simple teaching, uh, saints. And if you can do this, you don't have to complicate the Word of God. I'm a simple person, and I don't complicate the Word of God. Okay, uh, Psalm four, or Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, um, "Do." You, let me read it at 28, because uh, that it really starts there. Do you not know, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not become weary or tired? His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Oh, glory to God. Even when you know that you have the power of the Lord residing in, in, in you, even when you know that you are equipped in that area, there's going to be days where you lack power because you become weary. So you must sit at his feet. You must draw from him. You must worship him and let him increase his power in you. Though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Glory to God. He will help you. He will strengthen you. And that scripture really means when you wait upon the Lord, you are exchanging. What you're saying is, God, I am exchanging my strength for your strength because I can't do it without you. And that's where he wants us to be, uh, saints. He wants us to be vulnerable before him laid out before him, our hearts bare before him, being teachable before him and saying, God, I need you to strengthen me, to empower me. Okay. Um, it also goes on to say that um, the word in, back into Ephesians, sorry, it also goes on to say, be strong in the Lord and in the strength or in the uh, ability or the boldness of his might. Okay, that word power there, uh, find it be strong in the Lord and in the power. Okay, in some versions, my version, it says the strength, but it is power in the King James, I believe. In the power of his might, that word power there is the, is the word, Greek word kratos, and it means vigor or dominion. Do you know that you have been given dominion? Yes, that's the truth. You have been given dominion. Your new identity you no longer 
live and move and have your being in self. Your carnal man is dead. He, he died at baptism and he was resurrected with Christ to new life. So you have a new identity, but it's up to us to walk in it. That's a whole nother subject that I love to speak on because that's where I came out of myself and realized who I was in Christ. Realized I didn't have to give in to the old self and the old weaknesses and the old um, things that tried to hold me down. Okay, that word power is the word kratos and it means vigor, dominion, and might. And what did Genesis 1 say? Go back, if you go all the way to Genesis 1, this is very simple. Uh, again, you can, you can exhaust this a little more if you desire. Uh, 126 says, then God said, let us make man in our image. That word image really means uh, resemblance and or likeness. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You see, we are like Christ. As he is in the world, so are we. Don't look at yourself as being defeated, broken, busted, and cast down. Uh, but look at yourself as the overcomer, the mighty one that God says that you are. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the cattle, and over all the earth. Now, I know this could preach in many different ways, but that word there um, about uh, dominion, to rule means to have dominion. And it means to tread down, to prevail against, to overtake, to bring under control. God has given you, he's given me dominion. He's given me the ability to rule. He's giving me and you the ability to overtake everything that is in this earth. And if we look at it as being these, this earth creature, okay, not so much the earth, the land that we live on or the world in which we live in, but we are made from the earth, dust to dust, right? And so we could look at it and say that we have dominion over this earthen vessel. We have been given the ability to rule and reign over this earthen vessel. That the new man in us would take that authority, rise up and take the identity that Christ has given you. Glory to God. So we have been given the dominion. One of the meanings of dominion, back to Ephesians, where he says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength or in the power of his might, that word power, as I said, is kratos. It means dominion. Uh, it also means, um, it means to have or to over, as I said, to overtake or to have. So you have been given that dominion to overtake, especially manifested power. That's what it is. It's derived from a root meaning to be complete. It means creator. So we are already completed in that power. We already have it within us. And this word you is really used to, to exercise operative power. So think about that. You have been given power, mighty power, manifested power in you, but it's up to you to manifest it. It's up to you to put it into operation, glory to God. So... I want to leave that with you. I want you to know today, as I said, I want to keep this um, uh, short. It's just a word of exhortation um, that you have been endued. You have been clothed with strength from on high. You have been clothed with, just like when Jesus said in Luke, I'm going to end it with this. Luke, let me just quickly go. Luke 24, when he said uh, to the disciples, I think it's Luke 24, 49. He says, behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed or endued with power on high. Well, he was speaking of the Holy Spirit. If you've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, you have been clothed with power. Don't let it sit dormant, but use it today. Use it as you go about your day today and you uh, are faced with challenges, you are faced with lies in your mind from the enemy when he comes to you and lies to you, kick him down, cast him down, and let him know that you are a mighty saint of the Most High God. Glory to God. Have a blessed and powerful day today. And, and remember, the, the God that is in you is the same God that created the heaven and the earth, and he has caused you to be in his likeness. Glory to God. Be blessed today.